Hi everyone, it's Vacha here from RecordingStudio9.com and thanks for joining me again. Today we are experimenting and testing two Behringer products. One, the Behringer C1 microphone. If you want to find out a comparison video about it, I have done one. You can click right here. You can view that one and then you can come back. And I have at the moment the C1 connected to the Behringer's Xenix Q502 entry-level mixer. I had a lot of comments and inquiries about the C1 microphone, about its quality and how good it is um, when I did that comparison video. At the same time, you know, the Xenix Q502 USB mixer. Now, with my experiments and testing of the Xenix Q502 mixer, and you can find out all about the um, that mixer I've done a video on that as well you can click right here and you can view that one and then come back so I thought a lot of questions being asked about the quality and the noise level a lot of people complaining that there is noise when they're using the C1 microphone with the Behringer's Q502 but there are several reasons why there are some quality depreciations in there one, because the Xenix Q502 only provides plus 15 volt as its phantom power supply. Now, according to the C1 uh, manufacturer instruction and the booklet and specification, I had a quick look at it and it specifies mains voltage and supply voltage it's required is plus 36 to plus 52 volts at 2.5 milliamps. Now, that rang an alarm bell because if the Xenix Q502 is only supplying plus 15 volts, that means the C1 microphone is way below its recommended voltage. Now, what you're hearing now is actually the C1 connected to the Xenix Q502 um, mixer. So you will find out that it is a little bit noisy and it degraded the dynamic range is not as much and we will experiment that and find out using my laptop and graphs and analysis comparing that to see what the noise levels are with the Xenix Q502 and later on I'm gonna add my own phantom power supply which I know uh, supplies plus 48 volts it is a high quality uh, phantom uh, power supply for my condenser microphones so I'm gonna plug that in there and compare the two C1 connected directly to the Xenix Q502 with its own phantom power supply later on I'm gonna connect the C1 to my separate phantom power supply connected to the Xenix Q502 with the similar settings and then see what difference it actually makes the voltage difference between plus 15 volts to plus 48 volts. Now, part of the experiment, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna generate a tone from my speakers, just a, a one kilohertz tone, and then adjust the input level so that in either case, whether the C1 plugged into the Xenix Q502 directly or through my phantom uh, power supply, so that we have the same sensitivity level adjusted uh, with for the input gain and that will give us um, you know the dynamic range and noise differences when we are testing as always I have the main output of the Xenix uh, Q502 mixer connected directly to the back of my video camera so that's what you are hearing I should also mention that when I'm doing the testing I'm doing the testing of the dynamic range um, and the noise levels through its USB connection. So obviously the dynamic range and noise levels of analog output and the digital USB connection will be different. So the screen will show us the USB dynamic range and noise level, which is still, we are testing the input um, channel of the Q502 with the C1 microphone. But I thought I'll mention that so uh, you, what you might hear on, on the video is not exactly the same as what the screen 
analysis might show. Because the USB connection of uh, Xenix Q502 is 48 kilohertz at 16 bits. So that's, that's the limitation that we have. Where in analog, it might be a little bit different, might slightly be better than the, uh, the USB connection. And one other thing, the Xenix Q502 USB mixer on its microphone channel, it does have a compression knob. During all of my testing, the compression knob will be fully anti-clockwise, meaning turned off. Now, to actually test the microphone with tones and graphs, I am using Reaper. And this is how my Reaper setup is. I have two tracks, one which is actually listening to the microphone, and another track which will be generating a tone. So let's have a quick look to see what our settings are. So I am using the Behringer USB audio driver from the Behringer. My configuration is 44.1 kHz at 16 bit as the USB thing. And for the ASIO, everything is normal, normal 32 um, bit ASIO resolution. But as I mentioned, the USB driver is 16 bit. To generate a tone, I'm using a plugin, the, uh, the Reaper Cocos Reaper uh, plugin, Resynth. It's very simple, default settings, and I have a MIDI tone that is the note C6, and that generates uh, around one kilohertz tone. Okay, so. What I'm going to do is, while that note is playing, I'm going to adjust the input gain so I get the same level when being plugged in directly or through the phantom power supply. So that's for that track number. And for track number one, which will be monitoring the input signal from the microphone, I have in input settings. I'm just using the um, frequency spectrum and I'm using minus 120 dB of uh, noise floor level and an FFT of 128, so it's nice and smooth. And also I will be using the, um, the Melda Production uh, M analy Analyzer again to give us a smoothing so that I can also adjust the input levels while, while the tone is playing. So those are my testing gears. So I'm going to generate the tone and adjust the input gain so that it shows us uh, to the to, and I'm going to turn it all the way up to uh, plus 60 dB and adjust it so that it gives us uh, some relevant uh, reference uh, level and I would say maybe minus 30 dB so that when we plug in the uh, phantom power supply we adjust it to the same input sensitivity level as well so we have you know, uh, microphone having the same um, input sensitivity, so so we know what our reference level is. So here we go. Now that we have the sensitivity of the microphone set at minus 30 dB, that means we now have some level. So I will sit back and then look at the graphs and see what levels of noise we are getting at this level. Um, so I had to turn the video's sensitivity down as well and I am talking a little bit softer because the input is quite sensitive and needs to be sensitive so we can raise that um, noise floor level so we can see how noisy it is. So let's have a look.
As you saw on the screen, with the graph as well as the input uh, sensitivity level, with the tone generated and the microphone input gain set at minus 30 dB, we were getting anywhere between minus 45 to minus 50 dB of room ambience uh, and background noise, where um, with the graph as well, we were getting about minus 70 dB as of within the full spectrum, looking at the one kilohertz range um, of the of the graph. So now we be able to plug in our phantom power supply and do the same testing again, generate the tone, adjust the input gain so that we have the same sensitivity level and we'll see what the noise floor level will be then. So now I have the microphone connected directly to my phantom power supply and from coming out of the phantom power supply it's connected to the microphone input of the um, Behringer's uh, Q502. Uh, all the fader settings are exactly the same. All I'm going to adjust is the input gain. So I'm going to play the tone, adjust the input gain so again we get minus 30 dB. Um, uh, sensitivity and then I'll go quiet again and look at the screen and see what the graphs actually show us and what difference the phantom power made. I should also mention that the difference between the when it's plugged into the mixer directly and to the phantom power supply the LED on the, the light on the C1 microphone is much brighter obviously you know it's um, nearly three times as the voltage that's what that's providing than what the um, my phantom power supply is providing. So hopefully we'll see some differences in this experiment. There we go. There was definitely difference between having the microphone plugged in directly or to the phantom power supply. The input gain, I think it was just over um, halfway through. So it probably give, giving us instead of plus 60 dB gain to get minus 30 dB tone generated signal input in to probably about plus 30 dB gain. So that's 30 dB of input gain difference. As you might uh, realize from my last experiment using the Behringer's Q502, um, you know, when we turn 60 dB, the noise level really goes up without anything plugged in there. So you can imagine the difference. So we are gaining 60, 30 dB of gain by just plugging into the 48 volt power supply. So that means we don't have to crank up the input gain to get the same level of signal coming in from the microphone. So that's huge difference already in its case. I also saw on the screen how the graph is, um, obviously it's much less noise. It's about minus 50 um, dB for the signal. And with the spectrum graph, uh, we saw about minus 78 dB at one kilohertz. That's where it was hovering at. So it's at least eight dB less room noise or the internal noise that it actually had because I had to turn 30 dB less gain to the microphone. 
at the same time the graph in the um, in the analyzer was much smoother at about um, about 80 minus 84 DB and didn't have any peaks um, for the room ambient noise so it was much smoother when it was plugged in directly so obviously the frequency response and the characteristics of the microphone also changing when we are providing the correct voltage 48 volts so that's that's pretty huge difference uh, being plugged in directly with uh, only plus 15 volt for phantom power supply or 48 volts um, dedicated phantom power supply so what have we learned from this uh, experiment and testing we already know that the Behringer C1, the uh, phantom powered XLR the microphone, not the USB one, I have to remember that one as well to mention. Though it's an entry level microphone, it's still good quality to, to, to start with. So C1 could be one of the first microphones that you can purchase for your, if you're starting your home uh, studio. We also learned that microphones especially condenser microphones do require the specified voltage for them to work correctly so they have the right dynamic range to keep their noise floor level down and their frequency response as well at the same time so having it plugged in directly to the q502 with only plus 15 volts phantom power supply it does affect it it will increase the noise and it will reshape the frequency response as well but having it plugged in and supplied 48 volts um, with the same sitting on the mixer our noise level goes down our frequency response is much smoother obviously it dynamic range increases as well you know I had to turn down 30 dB of gain uh, on the mic on the mixer and that brings down lots of the mixer noise level down so it works much, much better. Now I know that the, um, the Q802 and, and, and up actually have built-in phantom power supply uh, of plus 48 volts because I had a look at this, uh, the schematics of those mixers but I couldn't find any schematics of the Q502 um, but looking and measuring it in my previous uh, um, testing I know that it's plus 15 volts they basically I think just use the rail voltage of the built-in op amps to provide um, some power phantom power but obviously it's not enough for the C1 microphone so if you have the Q502 and you are wanting to use condenser microphones I highly recommend to purchase uh, an additional phantom power supply that does provide 48 volts uh, I know Behringer also have the PS400 uh, I don't have them myself I've got uh, different ones that I use here move yourself up if you are thinking of purchasing it instead of buying the Q502 you might want to get the 802 you get extra channel at the same time you get the 48 volts phantom power supply the same goes with any condenser microphone I guess you got to look at the specifications C1 said 36 volts where other microphones might actually say they will work fine with 20 26 volts or even down to 15 volts so look at the specs they can work at that low voltage levels then you might be fine as always don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel that way you are always kept up to date with the latest information and um, tips and ideas and experimentations on reviews of products that i do uh, on my youtube channel and if this experiment was uh, helpful for you give me the thumbs up uh, it always keeps me happy getting thumbs up as well and if you have any comments in regard to this experiment something i missed explaining or showing showing uh, feel free to comment below and I'm more than happy to answer them uh, for you as well. And until next time, have a great time making music. Cheerio. Bye-bye.